Even as Messerschmitt explored the turbojet, it was also carrying out development on a more radical approach to aircraft propulsion. By mating a Volta rocket engine to an airframe designed by Dr. Walter Lippisch of the German Gliding Research Institute, Messerschmitt flew the prototype of the ME-163A in the spring of 1941. As flown, it represented an evolutionary stage between the original glider airframe and the production ME-163B. Flying trials continued at the experimental station at Peenemunde, with the 163A soon demonstrating a remarkable performance, including a phenomenal climb rate and a top speed of 550 miles an hour. On one occasion, it was towed to 13,000 feet, cast off, and lighting the engine achieved a speed of 623 miles an hour. Once the aircraft had burnt off its store of fuel, it resorted to its original state of glider. This was to be a feature of the production variant and it shared the prototype's very hazardous landing speed. The redesign of the A variant for service use saw the emergence of the production model B. However, the heart of the design remained the problematic Valta rocket engine. Developing a maximum thrust of some 3,750 pounds, its most dangerous aspect lay in the nature of its propellant. The rocket fuel was a mixture of 80% hydrogen peroxide with oxyquinoline or phosphate, more commonly known as T-stoff, and an aqueous solution of calcium permanganate referred to as Z-stoff. This highly unstable combination could cause explosions under certain circumstances. Furthermore, the pilot and ground crews wore special clothing to protect themselves against the highly corrosive nature of the fluid, which could dissolve human flesh. When tested on the ground, the engine was often cooled by water. Although an ME-163B test unit started trials of the type in 1943, it was not until May 1944 that production aircraft were delivered to the Luftwaffe. Manufacture had been dispersed all over Germany, with final assembly of the 163B taking place at a secret site deep in the Black Forest and dispatched by rail. However, production of the type was problematic, and it was only in July 1944 that the first 163 unit became operational. JG-400, based at Brandis, carried its distinctive unit marking of a rocket-powered flea on its nose. First seeing action on July the 28th, it was not until the 24th of August that Feld Vabel Schubert, seen here, was able to claim the first kill with the type. The serviceability of the 163B was never very high, and as early as July difficulties had started to be experienced in the supply of fuel from its only refinery sources at Ludwigshafen and Leverkusen. Not only were these to become the focus of bombing raids by US bombers, but both T-Stoff and Z-Stoff were used to power the launch module of the V-1 flying bomb that was just about to come into service. Stockpiling of fuel for this purpose was deemed to be a higher priority than supplying JG-400. So just eight 163s were available on the 24th of August when a force of 185 B-17s were approaching the synthetic oil refinery at Merzberg. The 163s were scrambled. Having climbed rapidly to height and to the rear of the formation, the 163s closed on the fortresses and opened fire with their 30mm cannon. The rapid speed of approach made only a very short firing pass possible. Nevertheless, Schubert was able to down two B-17s. Once the fuel was exhausted, the 163 made a very fast return flight to the base by gliding. The approach and landing on the airfield was made at very high speed. The small skid extending from the bottom of the fuselage did not provide a satisfactory method of landing, 
Many pilots were injured and killed when they came to grief at this stage of their flight. The proposed improved ME263 was provided with a proper undercarriage, but did not see operational service before war's end. Because of the danger from other returning 163, it was vital for each one that had already been landed to be recovered very quickly. A specially designed motorised trolley was provided for this purpose. It was provided with a hydraulic lift to raise the 163 and carry it back to its hard stand. The aircraft was then raised up to enable ground crew to replace the wheel takeoff dolly and so ready the Comet, as the type was now officially named, for its next sortie. Although much was expected of the 163, especially after the showing of the 24th of August, the hopes for the Comet were to remain unfulfilled. Indeed, the four B-17s shot down on that date marked the type's only aerial victories. Following the US bombing raid on the T and Zstoff refineries in September, the only fuel produced thereafter was diverted to service the V1 programs, and the 163s of JG400 were left to stand forlorn and unemployed on the hard stand at Brandis, deprived of the fuel that could have enabled them to fight. However, the 163 was the most radical aircraft to see service during the Second World War.